As you saw from our written testimony, the Attorney General uh, recently released a, a written opinion about this, uh, concluding that the Department of Hawaiian Homelands is entitled to 100 percent of the royalties uh, from geothermal developments on DHHL's available lands. It's been a week since the Attorney General came out with a formal opinion that all royalties from geothermal development on Hawaiian homelands should go to the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. Since then, not a lot has been said by the governor, even after we asked him directly. You always have to, to follow uh, legal precepts and, and conclusions, and uh, I have great confidence in the Attorney General's good judgment. One person who did have something to say was Keokaha community leader Patrick Kahawai Ola'a. How, what, when, where, why? Uh, are we going to, again, as I mentioned earlier, are we going to have uh, the department build homes that our beneficiaries can't afford? Are we going to uh, continue to be do commercial buildings? Is it going to is it going to make electricity on uh, the cost of electricity to the beneficiaries first? Cheaper. Kawaiho'ola'a is not only a homelands beneficiary, but he was also a part of the geothermal working group that put together the report that many believe laid the foundation for the next wave of geothermal development on the island. Patrick says he supports the use of the resource. You know, this eruption, Madam Pele has been there for 35 years straight. She hasn't stopped. Uh, there are some cultural practitioners who will say, Geothermal, no matter who's in charge of it, is a uh, detriment to our culture. I just have another spin on it. To me, as a Hawaiian, and I believe I have that right as a Hawaiian to make that assumption, or what I practice, what I learn, is that maybe she's telling us, Pele I'm talking about, maybe she's telling us, hey, I've been here 35 years waiting for you guys to do something to help your people. You've not done anything. In the spirit of Prince Kohio Day, we asked Uncle Patrick if he ever thinks about whether or not Prince Jonah Kuhio Kalani Anaole himself pondered issues like geothermal when it came to the Hawaiian Homes Act. Very good question, because that's, that's a discussion that we're having right now, and that's in terms of even what's going to happen on Mauna Kea, what's going to happen with geothermal, whether or not our Ali'is thought seriously about the technology that in their time, in 1900, 1920, or in the early, the late 1800s to the 1920s when Kuhil was alive, he died in 1920, I would believe the ancestors would try to embrace and see how to take the technologies that are available to the next level to help their people. Because they were, they were gracious Ali's. They all left a legacy someplace. Uh, and I would think uh, Ali's, kings and queens, that's what they, they live for, their legacy. What can they leave for their people? So, and then it's again going to be incumbent on the people. What are they going to do with that legacy that was left? So I would think they, they, they would. Uh, and I, I like to use the metaphor of the Hokulea. Uh, that a canoe, that voyaging canoe that brought people here, they didn't come just one voyage, burned a canoe for firewood, uh, firewood cooked their food and never went back. Uh, a ship or a, a sailing voyaging canoe like the Hokulea who did go back and forth. They traversed back and forth, bringing people, uh, bringing animals, bringing plants every time, uh, finding uh, innovative ways to where to make the low E, how to create fish ponds. Uh, that was all technology. They it was, you know, saying, hey, this is piling rocks, but they knew how to do it in such a way that nature, the ocean, didn't destroy it every time it got there. So I would truly believe that our, our Ali'is would have definitely used the technology that's available today to move forward.